What's up everyone, Jack from Half Grown. Today I'm talking about the video transmitter. That's right, the VTX. And there are a lot of different options out there. How do you choose the right one? Uh, how do you keep them from breaking? I find that this is the first component that goes for me. So let's take a look at the video transmitter, how it works. I'll give you some helpful hints how to make it even better and how do you choose the right one? Stay tuned. Okay, so these things, what are they and how do they work? Well, this is the video transmit. No matter which one you choose, their job is the same. It's to get the video from the camera to your goggles. Now, you can't just choose any old video transmitter and think it's gonna work with any old goggles. You have to have some intentional choices made here. And the first one is, do you go digital, that's DJI, or do you go analog, that's less expensive and a more common option. I personally love flying digital, but it's expensive. These DJI video transmitters are pricey, right? You have two options. You have the DJI Air Unit or you have the Cadex Vista. And the Cadex Vista starts at $150. Plus, you have to have all that expensive equipment uh, from DJI in order to get it to work. So let's talk about analog one. The first thing that I think you should kind of look at is size, right? Do you have a big quad where you can stick a, a pretty sizable uh, video transmitter on it, or do you have something small like a whoop and you need something small and lightweight? That's the first kind of consideration. Five inch, now you can pretty much put almost anything on there. Tiny whoop, you need something that's light. And a lot of people think that, you know, all of the quality comes out of the video transmitter, but there are a couple of different things you got to keep in mind. One, that antenna might be just as valuable in terms of of reception as the video transmitter itself. I've done a whole video on the right antenna to choose. You're gonna to wanna to check that out in the video description above or in the link below. But you'll notice there are also different kind of connectors on here. This is something called an MMCX connector. Um, and I think this is probably the preferred method for most small quads. Then you have pretty much the standard tiny whoop connector and that's the UFL. The problem with the UFL connector is it comes loose pretty easily in a crash. And if your antenna is not connected to your VTX and the power is on, that's the easiest way to fry it. In fact, the thing you have to remember, tip number one, Never plug in your quad if the antenna's not on. Then you have kind of the uh, standard SMA connector or RPSMA, depending on which uh, way it threads in, but that's a little bit bigger, uh, probably the best connection, but it's the bulkiest and adds the most amount of weight. A lot of video transmitters are switchable. You can change the power from 25 milliwatts, sometimes up to 1,000 milliwatts or even higher. And a lot of you think, well, why wouldn't I just crank it all the way up? Well, there are a couple of really important reasons. One, if you're flying with other people, you need to have it on 25 milliwatts, otherwise you're gonna bleed over their signal. Two, higher signal, more energy, more heat. These things tend to heat up pretty quickly. If you leave it sitting around, it's going to overheat, and that could cause serious problems to either the component or even the drone itself. I've fried a couple of different video transmitters by leaving them plugged in and not flying. Once they're flying, they get that airflow going through and it cools it down. But if it's sitting, that's a problem. I'm gonna show you a quick way to make sure that when you're sitting, when it's unarmed, it lowers the power mode. So if you do fly in higher power modes, you're definitely gonna wanna do this. So we're gonna head over to Betaflight to get this done. Now, I get a lot of this from Oscar Liang or from Joshua Bardwell. Check out their stuff. Great tutorials, lots of great info. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and type in get VTX so we can see all of the different commands involving the VTX. Now, this is uh, what we're looking at right here, uh, the low VTX power, right? That's what you wanna set in order to make sure you don't fry your VTX or overheat your VTX. You know, some people say it's not a big deal. I burnt one out just the other day because I didn't do this. So as I've set VTX, right? And then this is awesome. I get the uh, menu here. Low power disarm space equals space on, right? I'm gonna click enter. Now I've set it. Now I'm gonna click save, enter. And hopefully that can save you some headaches. 
Keep in mind, flying at a higher power isn't always the best. In some environments, higher power will create something called multipath. You get these lines going across screen, and that's not good. Typically, in enclosed places or places where the signal can bounce off of structures, you're going to get multipathing. So a lower signal might be better there. When you're choosing your video transmitter, there are some features you're going to definitely want to make sure that you have. And the first one is smart audio. Smart audio is absolutely a game changer. Uh, before smart audio, the only way to change the channel on your VTX was on some sort of button. This is kind of an all-in-one tiny whoop uh, camera and VTX. And you press this little button here to change the channel. You hold it to change the band. Now with smart audio, the remote and your goggles on, you can change it and I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, to enter the smart audio, I'm gonna throttle left and pitch forward. You see then on my goggles, I have this new menu and I'm gonna go down to features VTX uh, SA, that's my smart audio and I have a bunch of different op options. I can change the band, I can change the channel, I can change the power. Um, I This is how you should be setting the channel and band that you're on. Don't rely on switching, right? When I when I set everything and then I confirm it, you'll see that it disappears, right? That means it changed channel. It went to the exact channel I want it to. Now you can see I'm on race band two. The power is kind of arbitrary. Maybe it says 25, 100, 200. It's just whatever the, you know, the VTX works at. Tramp audio, as you see, is basically the same. It's just a different protocol. Some VTXs uses smart audio, some use tramp. Um, and then there are other things that you can do. You can change the PID profiles from your goggles. You don't have to go back into Betaflight. Um, you can change the OST. There are a lot of different things that I probably wouldn't mess with. Other features that you may want, you know, so a lot of these have LED either um, screens or lights that tell you what channel and band you're on. You can kind of double check. Again, I like to double check in my goggles with smart audio. And it doesn't have to be smart audio. There's something called Tramp. Uh, does the same thing. It's just a different protocol. Some VTXs use Tramp. Some uses smart audio. It's just who created it that matters. As long as you can change it using your remote, you're in good shape. Okay, so let's talk about what do I recommend? What do I really like? Well, uh, if you're dealing with a tiny whoop, uh, if you're converting something like an Ishin E010, E011, then you want one of these all-in-one camera and VTX. Uh, you can get one for like 20 bucks on Amazon. I'll, show, I'll send a link uh, down below. You can check that out. If you're going digital, and that means DJI, uh, the air unit is nice. Uh, you can record on board. Otherwise, the Caddx Vista is lighter, smaller, and less expensive. Now, Ishin makes some really inexpensive expensive VTXs, uh, the Nano is great. I've got, I just put an Ishii TX23 or something like that um, in my Cinewhip that I burnt out. They're really good. I've had really good luck with the Rush VTXs. Those are good, a little bit pricier. Um, I'll leave some links down below. Some people prefer the TVS ones, but I'm a Rush fan. Where do I recommend you buy these things? Well, there are a couple different places. Um, if you're looking for the cheapest, least expensive way to do it, Banggood is it, right? Banggood is, think of Chinese Amazon. I know it's a funny name, but uh, it's Chinese Amazon. They sell everything from drones to uh, COVID-19 masks and gloves. They've got everything on there and it's cheaper. Problem is it's coming from China. It's gonna take a while. So you're gonna have to be patient. Unless you upgrade your shipping and you pay a higher cost. Then of course there's Amazon. Uh, I, I do use Amazon from time to time. But don't forget there are some US suppliers as well. Good Venture Drones, great company, know the owner. If you're looking for micro parts, that's a good place to start. Also get FPV and race day quads. They have excellent selection and they're US based companies. Hopefully that was helpful. The VTX, it is a confusing or can be a confusing component. Um, we're not running through how to set it up, just some little helpful hints. Make sure you check us out on halfchrome.com. And if you like our content, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.